Among the most iconic images of entertainment conjured to the mind when you think about the Victorian era is, of course, the circus. As well as the less savoury, and certainly nowadays less politically correct, travelling and permanent freak shows that sprung up both around the country and around the world. This week, we will take a slight dive into this world with the life of a man who had come to be known as the Norfolk Giant. Robert Hales was born either on the 2nd of May, 1813 or 1820. Sources are undecided, although 1820 is marked on his grave, in the village of West Somerton near the coastal town of Great Yarmouth. He was baptised on the 31st of October. He would be the sixth of nine children born to William Hales and Elizabeth Dybel. Robert's extreme height might have been unusual in general at the time, with the average height of a man being around five foot five, but it was certainly not within his family. Both of his parents were said to be over six foot tall. The average height of his sisters was six foot three, with two of them, Mary and Anne, to be closer to seven foot tall, and his brothers were all around six foot five. But Robert, when fully grown, would tower over them all. Growing up around the Norfolk Broads, Robert developed a love for ships and sailing, often helping on the wherries, shallow, barge-style boats that carried all manner of cargo along the Broads. His fondness for the craft, and, as a young man from Norfolk at the time, he was surely raised on the stories of the daring actions and climactic battles of the county's very own hero, Horatio Nelson. All this would lead to him signing up for the Royal Navy, aged 13. His time in the Royal Navy would not last long. His ever-growing height became unworkable. Soon, there was no hammock that he would fit in. The daily rations for a man were not enough to sustain him. He had grown so tall, he was unable to fit on the gun decks without having to crouch the entire time. So, at the age of 17, and the height of 7 foot 2, he was paid off and returned to land. Out of work, and with few job opportunities for a man of his stature, and what a stature it was, 7 feet 2 inches tall, 33 stone, 64 inch chest, 62 inch waist, and 34 inch thighs, he soon found a place where his unique looks could earn him a wage, the circus tent. Working at fairgrounds first around the county, from Tombland in Norwich to the Britannia Fair in Great Yarmouth, he was soon joined by one of his sisters, Mary, who was just four inches shorter than her brother. Together, the two of them soon became a real draw for the crowd. So much so, they set up on their own, travelling around the country in a bright yellow caravan, performing all over. By now, Robert had grown to his full height of seven foot eight. Robert's ability to pull in such a crowd would grow over the years, until 1840, when he was told he had a very distinguished visitor. It was at Epsom Races when he discovered that word of him had reached the royal court, and Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were desperate to meet him. The couple were said to be enchanted by the Norfolk giant, with Victoria commenting that facially he had a striking resemblance to King George IV. Sadly, Mary died the following year, aged just 30, after contracting pneumonia while performing in Guernsey. Her husband, Joseph Lasky, who had accompanied the two of them on their travels and doubled as their manager, would remarry, this time to Robert's other sister, Anne. It was an arrangement that Robert disapproved of and they all parted ways shortly after. For a while, he carried on with solo work, until, after a dinner meeting with a caravan agent, Robert was talked into leaving Britain in 1849, as there was far more work to be found across the Atlantic in America. I will quickly add this in, but as an aside, it seems to be a bit of a tall tale. But apparently, during the journey across the Atlantic, a young boy fell overboard. Robert instantly jumped in after him, and it was only due to his size and strength he was able to carry the boy back to the ship and both of them to safety. Upon his arrival in the States, it didn't take long for an unusual man like Robert to get the attention of a certain individual, someone who was either seen as a keen businessman, an entrepreneur and a showman, or an exploiter, a charlatan and a con man, P.T. Barnum. Barnum quickly snapped up Hales, signing him up as part of his American museum for the price of £800, £104,212, 50 pence today. Located at Broadway and Anne in Lower Manhattan, it held a mixture of real historical items, speculations and flat-out fabrications. Items from the American Revolution were placed alongside a tree they claimed had once been sat under by Jesus and his disciples, as well as the infamous Fiji mermaid that was in reality a dead monkey and a dead fish, both cut in half and attached to each other, as well as all manner of attractions, from a flea circus to trained bears to a learned seal named Ned. And then, of course, there was what was dubbed 
Human Curiosities. This is where you would find Annie Jones, the bearded lady, General Tom Thumb, who by pure coincidence his daughter is buried in Norwich, conjoined twins Chang and Ing, and many others. What would be seen today as total exploitation was at the time the only work that many of them could get, and as you will see from Robert's legacy, could earn a decent amount of money from. It was here that Robert gained his famous moniker, the Norfolk Giant. While there, he soon discovered he was not the only giant in the museum. There was also Eliza, or possibly Elizabeth Simpson, originally from Bantry, County Cork in Ireland, who was advertised to be eight foot tall. The two were married and possibly had a child together, although there is some doubt about both the child and the legitimacy of the marriage, as the whole thing might have been an invention of Barnum's to sell more tickets, with him even selling tickets to the wedding itself. Robert would stay as part of Barnum's attractions for two years before leaving, and by 1851 had returned to Britain alone, adding more weight to the marriage not being real, although the shadow of it would remain over him, and when he married a woman by the name of Maria Charlotte Webb, there were whispers of bigamy. He would carry on working as an attraction in his home country, and had clearly not been forgotten by his royal admirer from years before. He was invited to Buckingham Palace by Queen Victoria, to meet her children and several dignitaries. The five children were reported to be struck with wonder and astonishment, as was Colonel Buckley, who at the time was believed to be the tallest soldier in the British Army, at six foot three. But when stood next to Robert Hales, the Queen remarked, I thought the Colonel was very tall, but really he looks quite small by the side of Mr Hales. When he left his life of touring, he became a pub landlord, running the Craven Head Tavern in Drury Lane in London, although some sources claim it was the Burgundy Arms in Sheffield but his health soon began to worsen, leading him to abandon the tavern. He and Maria moved into a caravan in Crumble Corner in the village of Baton, which adds credit to the Sheffield theory, where he made a living selling leaflets that told of his incredible life story. Robert would have been no stranger to health problems, something that plagues many in his condition. In 2004, the BBC interviewed Chris Greener, the tallest man in Britain at the time, who had a lot of empathy for Robert. He probably had a lot of problems, more so than I have. He was slightly taller and much heavier. He weighed some 33 stone, 210 kilograms. He was a big fellow. Their final move was back to Norfolk, moving into 3 Wellington Road, Great Yarmouth, where at the age of 43, Robert died of bronchitis on the 22nd of November, 1863, leaving Maria the sum of £600 in his will, a fairly decent sum of money that comes to £78,000, £159.38 pence today. After his death, his body was returned to the village he had grown up in and buried in St Mary's Church in West Somerton, where his tomb can still be found today, bearing his stage name, the Norfolk Giant. Very little in the way of remembering Robert survived today. The house he had grown up in was demolished in 1963, but his lantern and walking stick can be found in the Great Yarmouth Museum. Although we can only imagine that as a showman, he'd be more than happy that his name is still talked about over 150 years since his passing. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. All of the information and pictures used can be found in the description below. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you wish. This was Robert Hales, the Norfolk Giant. And this was A Little Bit of History.